Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Our first map shows total precipitation measured by NASA's GPM mission, looking over the time period here, February 1st through the 27th. Now, we knew that were those stalled out boundaries throughout the month of February, really delivering a lot of precipitation from Minas Gerais back into Mato Grosso in that area. A lot of places in here picking up well in excess of a foot of rainfall. Now that's not too far outside of the normal in Mato Grosso, but over in the east that's pretty excessive. There were drier pockets like in Mato Grosso do Sol, parts of Parana, but getting down into Rio Grande do Sol and northern parts of Argentina where we talked about last week seeing the smoke from the wildfires. We did see coming through in the last few days here some big storms out of the south and some of them have put down very heavy precipitation as measured by satellite. For example, in southern uh, Argentina and then over here in eastern Argentina in Buenos Aires. And it was interesting, I was looking here at some satellite data, and if I just kind of play this back, let's let it refresh, there we go. Here's some of the data from yesterday. Now, I want you looking right down here, because what I was watching were these big storms erupting on a frontal boundary right here. And you can see the anvils, like the overshooting tops, look at that, as the sun sets right in through that area. And some of these big storms continue to press north right here along, let's back you up a little bit, right here along where the Parana River is, so near Santa Fe, and eventually that river comes out near Buenos Aires. Now, it was interesting watching that because I saw on Twitter some videos uh, showing some huge hailstones falling from some of these storms. And by just looking at them, I think we're looking at baseball to softball size hailstones. If there is one place that rivals the central plains of the United States for hail, uh, it is Argentina, and you can see here those big storms really put down some huge, huge hailstones there. Now, just thinking about all of that, I'd like to go back to one of our favorite sites here, uh, worldagweather.com, and let's just take a look at a few regions. I ignore the stuff over here on the right. You can tell that my son, who's nine, uses the same uh, search browser that I use, so apparently he's been looking up Lamborghinis and stretchy-faced things, but whatever. Okay, back here. Mato Grosso. There's that dry stretch that started off harvest. Since then, I'll be honest, this has been pretty ideal. Even though they're a bit in deficit, the precipitation curve has got the same slope as average. So this just helped with harvest, and since then they've not been overly wet to make that up. Uh, let's go east of there over toward Goyas. Now, Goyas has been an area that's been a, quite a bit wetter. You can see they've nearly matched their average oops, right in through there uh, over the last... Um, you know, over the last about a month when, when looking at these data. Go a little bit farther south into Mato Grosso do Sol. This is an area that I am a bit unsure about because there was a long stretch of drier weather here in February, but at the end we did bring in some better moisture. But you can still see here there is a deficit in Mato Grosso do Sol. Farther south of there into Rio Grande do Sol, um, that's, these are some of our driest areas where they've only been punctuated by some heavy rainfall events. Quickly into Argentina, I just want to go straight to Cordoba. So remember, these were the heavy rains that helped correct the drop, but then look, they've had these long stretches of drier weather uh, over that time period. And Santa Fe, where those big storms just rolled through, they're not yet accounted for on this map, but that's going to help uh, bring up that deficit a little bit. All right, so where do we stand with all of this? I'd like to come back up into Brazil, take you to the IMEA website, and we're going to go down here looking at soybeans and how about harvest progress which is right here so if we take a look at the latest report released on monday uh, here we go we're going to see that harvest progress right now 78 percent a year ago 52 percent so we're still moving along with this harvest pretty well let's go back to the same site and check out for uh, corn excuse me uh, where they are with planting and the latest update here for safrina planting of corn Again, still above the five-year average by about 5% and well above where we were a year ago at 55%. So the current number is right here, almost at 83%. So that just tells us this Safrina crop's going in relatively quickly. Now, bigger picture things, when you look over the next 15 days, the drier conditions stay east. Now, this is Goyas and this is Minas Gerais. That's the area that had been overly wet. So we wouldn't look at this saying that this is going to be a problem. Near normal precipitation from Mato Grosso, but still quite a bit of heavy rainfall from northern uh, Argentina into Paraguay, Uruguay, and southern Brazil. And those are areas that really need this moisture. So we would look at this overall, and I can't say that this is problematic. Might be too much rain in places here. We've seen certainly some big storms. But we've got several fronts coming through. Take a look at this. I know I don't often show it to you this way, but this is the wave train in the jet stream 
down in South America. There's a trough, trough, trough. And each one of them is going to bring a front that'll come through Argentina up out of the south. We can see that by looking here at the latest European forecast data. So here's the first front, but you see there's a low. There's a, in fact, I should circle those the other way. There's a low here and there because that's the direction these things spin in the southern hemisphere. So what we end up getting is first low stalls out a frontal boundary here through middle of this week. Second low moves out without too much issue, but look, there's still the frontal boundary from the first low pressure system. Here's the second one. That one brings a front through. This is by this Saturday into Sunday. And that front stalls out. Heavy rain on that front. This is going to be an active severe weather week. It's all the way out there through Monday into next Tuesday. It just slides a little bit farther to the north. And during that time period, we have a little bit weaker monsoonal flow and very dry here. All that action is going to be in these fronts moving farther to the north. As you get into week two, they're still stalled out here but better moisture returns in the monsoon. And I'll be honest, a lot of this is because the MJO, instead of popping out way over into phase five, I know I talked about that for like a week and a half, but the latest update is suggests that the MJO is not gonna do that. It's gonna likely crash back into null space, which means we'll get better return of moisture here. Okay, uh, maybe we'll just take a look at it real quick. Let's go over to the Hofmuller diagrams and just show you this real fast. You see what ends up happening is, we have the MJO generally somewhere here, but no longer as strong, all right? And now we're starting to see better rising motion. See these kind of blue-green color over South America. So the net effect is we're eliminating the risk of this staying drier longer. That's the main takeaway. Now, what is very interesting in the long-range forecast is what's shown up in the weeklies. Take a look at it right here. What we end up seeing is down here, in Argentina, a really strong dry signal just emerged. Wetter into southern Brazil, drier here. Now, I'm going to be honest, I can look at this all day and try to explain it a bunch of different ways, but none of those ways are making a whole lot of consistent sense with me. So until I see what the trade winds are going to do, where the MJO is going to emerge, how strong this monsoonal circulation is going to be, we're just going to leave this as a model forecast. And this is going to put risk, should it verify, down here. And we need to keep an eye on that safrina crop as it tries to finish in the month of April. By the way, the safrina crop goes typically all the way till June, so we got a while to watch on it, but this will be important to see here. Okay, I'll stop it there. Hope you all have a good rest of your week, and I'll talk to you on Thursday. Thanks.